जय महा माया की जय बोले बाबा की जय जगदम्बे मत की जय In our last discourse, we read about the, all the gods going first to Brahma and then to Lord Shiva, and then Lord Shiva saying, "I think we should all go to Lord Vishnu and meet together in Vaikuntha." So they are on their way, and we'll read Chapter Eight now. <clears throat> Veda Vyasa said, "Soon the devas reached Vaikuntha, which was protected by Vishnu." They at once began to look at the exquisite and indescribable beauty of the place. At intervals, they saw nice, lovely, divine houses shining and appearing very splendid. Pools and lakes were seen in front of them, beautified with lotus flowers. They began to see at other places rivers flowing, swans, cranes, and other aquatic birds swimming. They are easily and warbling lovely sounds. At other places again, beautiful gardens came to their sight, adorned exquisitely with Kampaka, Asoka, Mandara, Tilaka, and other beautiful various flowers. The cuckoos were seen there cooing melodiously, bees humming gently, and peacocks dancing beautifully. In the center was situated the golden palace of Lord Vishnu. Towering to the heavens, the rooms and quadrangles were all charming. At places, they were bedecked with gems and jewels, and adorned with various paintings. There was the divine seat in the center, composed wholly of gems and jewels, and Vishnu occupying this place. There were Vishnu's attendants, Sundana, Nandana, and others. They were so much devoted to their master that their hearts never became. Attached to anything other than them, so they were devoutly singing his praises and chanting his hymns with undivided attention. There were dancing apsaras, celestial maidens, and the devas, Gandharvas, and Kinaras were singing in melodious tunes. Those who loved the chanting of the Vedas, such calm-tempered munis, were reciting the Vedic suktas. And thus highly extolled him, the two lovely gatekeepers Jaya and Vijaya were waiting in the entrance gate with golden sticks in their hands. The devas coming nigh the city of Vishnu caught sight of them and said, "Any of you may go and inform Lord Vishnu that Brahma, Shiva, and the whole host of de- gods are waiting at his door to see him." Hearing their words, Vijaya went away at once to Vishnu and, saluting him, informed him of the arrival of the devas. O Lord, thou, thou destroyer, excuse me, Vijaya said, O Lord, thou destroyest the enemies, the gods; hence, thou art the most worshipped of them. O Lord of Rama, the whole hosts of gods have come and are waiting at thy door. Brahma, Shiva, Indra, Varuna, fire, and Yama, and other gods anxious to see thee, are all praising thee by proper hymns. Hearing Vijaya's words, Vishnu, the Lord of Brahma, became very、um, excited and soon went out of his room to see the devas. Vishnu came up to them and, seeing the devas waiting at the doors, very morose and tired, cheered them up by casting a favorable glance. Full of affection and love, the gods bowed down and praised hymns to Vishnu, the Deva, the Devas, the enemies of the demons, and revealer、uh, in revealed in the Vedas. O Deva, the Devas, thou art the Creator, Preserver, and the Destroyer of the worlds. <coughs> thou art the ocean of mercy and the sole refuge of this universe. O Lord, we have come to thee as our great refuge. Therefore. Dost thou save us from the present difficulty? Thus praised by the gods, Vishnu said, "O immortals, take your respective seats and speak. How are you all? Why have you all in body come here? Why are you so much depressed and worn out with cares? Why do you look so melancholy? Say soon for what purpose you wish. You with Brahma and Shiva have come here." 
the Deva said, O oh Lord, the Asura, the demon, Mahisa, is very cruel and wicked, always addicted to vicious acts. Now that most sinful Danaba has become very much puffed up with pride and is tormenting us always. What more shall we say than this? He is appropriating to himself the shares of all the yagyas performed by the Brahmanans. We are therefore terror-stricken and are wandering in the mountains and the forest. O destroyer of Madhu, he has become unconquerable due to his being granted the boon. Considering, therefore, the gravity of our situation, we have taken refuge unto thee. O Lord Vishnu, thou art acquainted with all the tricks and maya of this demon. Therefore, thou art capable to kill them. Therefore, thou alone art able to deliver us from the present difficulty. Be pleased, therefore, to devise means by, for that purpose. The creator, Brahma, has granted him this boon that the demon could not be killed by any man. Therefore, we are asking you, where can we find a female who will be able to kill this hypocrite in battle? Mahisa has turned out very wicked on the strength of that boon. Say, therefore, who amongst Uma, Lakshmi, Sachi, or Vidya, or any other woman will be able to kill him? Therefore, O gracious one of faithful worshippers and attendants, thou art the preserver of this world. Now devise specially the cause of his death and carry out the purpose of the gods. Vishnu, on hearing their words, spoke smiling. We fought before, but this demon could not be killed at that time. Hence, if some beautiful female deity be now created out of the collective energy and form of the Shaktis of each one of us, then that lady would be able easily to destroy that demon by sheer force. The lady deity then sprung from the collective energy of ours would be at once be able to destroy that Mahisa elated on his getting the power though he is skilled in hundreds of, of magic. Therefore, ask ye now all, with your wives respectively, boons from that portion which resides in you all in the form of fiery energy, that the collective energy, the Shakti, thus manifested, may assume the form of a lady. We will then offer unto her all the divine weapons, the trident, etc., that belong to us. That deity, then full of energy and with all the weapons in her hands, would kill that wicked demon, vicious and swelled with vanity. O Vishnu, the Lord of the Devas, saying thus, came out spontaneously at once of the face of Brahma, the brilliant, fiery energy, very difficult to conceive. That energy looked red like gems and pearls, hot, and at the same time, a little cool, having a beautiful form and encircled by a halo of light. The high-souled Vishnu and Shiva of mighty valor were astonished to see the fire emitted from Brahma. Next came out of the body of Shiva, his fiery spirit, quite in abundance and very wonderful to behold. It was silvery, white, terrible, unbearable, and incapable of being even seen with difficulties. It extended like a mountain and looked horrible as if the incarnation of the Tamaguna, like another Tamaguna. Shiva is the incarnation of Tamaguna and destroys everything. It was very surprising, the devas, and very fearful to the demons. Next, a dazzling light of blue color emanated from the body of Lord Vishnu. <clears throat> the light that came out of the body of Indra was hardly bearable, of a beautiful variegated color and comprised in itself the three qualities. Thus, masses of light came out respectively from Kubara, Yama, Fire, and Varuna. The other devas, too, gave their shares of fiery light their Shakti, very lustrous and splendid. Then these all united into a great mass of fire and light, like another Himalayan mountains, Shanfo, 
their lustrous divine light. Vishnu and the other devas were all extremely surprised to see this. While the devas were thus looking steadfastly on that fire, an exquisitely handsome lady was born out of it, causing excitement and wonder to all. This lady was Mahalakshmi, composed of the three qualities, of the three colors, beautiful and fascinating to the universe. Her face was white, eyes were, her face was white, eyes were black, her lips were red, and the palms of her hands were copper red. She was adorned with divine ornaments. The goddess was now manifest with 18 hands, though she had a thousand hands in her unmanifested state. Now she became manifest out of the mass of fire for the destruction of the demon, Mahasur. Janamajaya, King Janamajaya asked, O Basamunis, you are highly fortunate and you are all-knowing. Kindly describe in detail the birth of her body. O Veda Vyasa, please say whether the energies of all the gods united into one or remained separate, whether her body and her limbs were all luminous. Was it that her face, nose, eyes, and all her parts of her body were created out of the different fires respectively, or whether it was it that those limbs were fashioned when the different fires blended into one huge mass? Describe in detail the origin of the body and the several limbs thereof. Also inform me the limbs that were produced out of the corresponding devas, fiery parts, as well tell me the several ornaments and several weapons given by the several devas, respectively. I am very desirous to hear all these from your lotus-like mouth. O oh, Brahmana, hearing from your lotus-like mouth the life and doings of this beautiful goddess, the sweet juice as they are, I am as yet not satiated and am in desirous to hear even more. Veda Vyasa, the son of Satyavati, hearing his words, addressed him in following sweet words. O oh, best of the Kurus, very fortunate you are. I will describe in detail to the best of my understanding the origin of her body. However, even Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and Indra are never competent enough to describe her form properly. As I already told you that she sprung at the instant the word was spoken, how then can I ascertain the form or likeness of the Devi? She is constant. She is always existent. Though she is one, yet she assumes different forms for the fulfillment of the Deva's ends whenever their positions become serious. Though the actor is one, yet for the entertainment of the spectators, she assumes different forms in the stage. So the Nirguna Devi, though formless, assumes in her pastimes many different forms of sattvic, rajasic, or tamasic qualities to fulfill the Deva's purposes. There are various names given to her according to the works done by her, and they vary immensely in their natures. I will now describe to you, as far as my knowledge goes, the excellent form that came out of that mass of celestial light. Her grand, beautiful, white lotus-like face was created out of the fiery energy of Lord Shiva. Her glossy black, beautiful hair on the head, overhanging to the knees, were formed out of the light of Yama. Her three eyes came out of the energy of fire. The pupils of those eyes were of black color, the middle parts were of white color, and the ends were red. The two eyebrows of the Devi were black and came out of the spirit of Sandhya, twilights. They were nicely curved and were looking spirited like the bow of Cupid, and they were shedding, as it was, cooling rays. From the light of Bayou air, her two ears were created. They were not very long, nor very short, beautiful like the swinging seat, rocking chair of the god of love. Her nose was fashioned out of the fire of Kubara, 
the lord of wealth. It looked like the till flower, a glassy and exquisitely charming. Her pointed rows of glossy and brilliant teeth looking like gems came out of the energy of Daksha. They looked like the Kunda flowers. Her lower lip was red, deep red, and it came out of the fire of Aruna, the charioteer of the sun. Her beautiful upper lip came out of the energy of Kartika. Her 18 hands came out of the Tejas of Vishnu, and her red fingers came out of the Tejas of Vasus. Her breast came out of the energy of Soma, and her middle navel with three folds was created out of the spirit of Indra. Her thighs and legs were from Varuna, and her spacious loins came out from the earth. O king, thus from the various Tejas contributed by the Devas, that heavenly lady came out. Her body and the several parts thereof were beautiful. Her form was incomparably graceful, and the voice was exquisitely sonorous and lovely. The devas, oppressed by Mahasur, became overpowered with joy seeing this well-decorated Devi having beautiful eyes and teeth and charming in all respects. Vishnu then addressed all the devas to give all their auspicious ornaments and weapons. He said, O oh devas, better give all you, you the various arms and weapons endowed with strength, created out of your own weapons, and give them all today to this devi. Here ends the eighth chapter of the fifth book of the description, the origin, and the form of the devi in the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam of Mahapuranam of 18,000 verses by Maharishi Veda Vyasa. Jai Mahamaya ki jai Vashvashvari mati ki jai Haryakandashvari mati ki jai Bole Baba ki jai